Okay. What's up, internet, and welcome to another episode of The Kingdom. Before we get going here, just a quick reminder, give us a like on here, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton, and we'll get into the business now. Five, four, three, two, one. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Kingdom. As always, my name is Drums, and I'm joined usually by the brothers behind King Golf, Regan and Jordan Headley. But we have a special guest joining us today in place of Reg. So we're going to go switch things up a bit here. We're going to see what's going on in George's neighborhood first. What's going on, buddy? Top of the evening to you boys. Uh, we're missing Reggie here tonight. Pretty sad that he's not here. I think it's the first episode we've done without him. Uh, sounds like he's uh, got some stuff he's busy with tonight. So he might hop on later. Who knows? But in the meantime, we're happy to have Dal here. He's been on the podcast before. And uh, he's got his laptop tonight. He was kind of, uh, you, you were on your phone last time, weren't you, Dale? Yeah. yeah, it was kind of a last second. Yeah. Here you go. Let's do this. So I didn't know you guys were that professional. We and are. You got speaker or not speakers. You got headphones and a mic headphones, this time. Yeah. That's, that's key. Well, yeah. It's like, you should just let me know you guys are a real operation. I could have been. <laughs> could have been real. <laughs> Anyways, not much. Not much is going on in my world today. Um, I, I still have my clubs in the kitchen just in case, because this time last year we were golfing at uh, Deer Ridge. So you never know. You never know. I don't know what the I don't know what the weather's like the next little while. Oh, excuse me, but plus <clears throat> twelve on uh, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I think uh, this weekend's supposed to be decent. So they're in the kitchen. I stubbed my toe on it this morning, so I had to move them a bit because they're right in the way. But they're still up here. There you go. But that's it. Good. Move her on. Dally boy, how are you? It's been a while. All right. Hi. 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 Thanks for having me back, fellas. Good. Good to have you. It's been a while. I thought uh thought maybe you just iced me, had enough of my shit, but uh good to be back. We t- we'll take you in doses, small doses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Just like Michael. the real life. <laughs> microdosing yeah we're microdosing dowel yeah um not much going on got married i guess that's kind of cool oh yeah that's new oh yeah it's a pretty pretty good time had by all i think but you had so- um the honeymoon you had a, a quick stop in uh bc what course did you hit up on yeah there? oh we played uh predator ridge in vernon and? wow unbelievable so there's two courses there there's the Ridge and the Predator. The Predator is more of a link style uh, on the backside of the mountain, so you can't really see the water or anything. And it's got, like, the tall fescue everywhere and lose your ball as soon as it goes into the rough type thing. So we never played that one. We played the Ridge, which was more cut into the stone of the mountain and your tee boxes. You can see the lake in the background. And uh, what do we see? An ant. No, I think it was just a deer. We had a deer go across a couple of times. The guy stopped and said there was a bear on seven that you might run into. And oh, it holy cow! Out. Yeah, it was a little sketch though because you got to get paired with somebody there, right? You're paying a nice course. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, we're at the driving range hitting a bucket, and uh, it's just all these like fifty year old loaded guys. Like me and I looking at each other, like we should not be here. Like <laughs> not for us. But anyways, we got up to the first tee, and there's this couple from Saskatoon that were the same age as us, and it was a blast. Like, he was just – he said he only been golfing for, like, two years, but he was pretty legit. But uh, he was throwing a little little more tips than I wanted to hear. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, other than that, it was good. It's a good day. 200 bucks around, though. That was a little steep. A little steep. But a course like that, well, like uh, that's that's pretty standard for a course like that. Yeah, that's yeah. where like Team Canada has their summer training there. The hockey. Oh, okay. Canada. So they're always there. They got a facility, and uh, they said after we were done our round, you could go around again for no charge if there's tea times. Oh. So if you play really? at like yeah, you get out early, and you play, and then you come around again. So you play thirty six. Like that's not that bad then. No. That's because like, like Clear Lake's a hundred and some bucks, isn't it? Like Clear Lake's still under Clear Lake? Yeah, it's it's maybe they're like 90, 96 or something, but like just barely. 
So compared to that. Because they're still in the top 100 courses under 100 bucks or something. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know but where yeah, that like one ranks? So in the, you play an Unreal course in BC, 36 holes for 100 bucks. You can do that loss. Plus, that's peak season, right? Like you were there in uh, August? Yeah, end of August. So with those, with a lot of those um, high-end courses, they have like off, not off season, but peak season, and I guess it'd be called off season. And usually they cut cut them about by twenty five percent, I think, for the off seasons, which is maybe May and September and stuff like that. So yeah, that's not bad at all. Because I'm pretty sure Predator Ridge would be in the top one hundred courses in Canada. It's number three. That's what I saw. Yeah. Really. I didn't know that. No, I'm interesting. Uh, I could be, I could have not saw something right, but I thought that's what I saw was number three. Dell comes on just spreading fake news, misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to get censored. <laughs> we need fact checkers on this. <laughs> um, the other thing was a membership there. It was 60 grand to get in and then like 14 a year and you had to spend like, oh yeah four or five in the pro shop or something and so 60 is the initial buy-in 60 to get in yeah that's wild off must be nice but i think that even courses some of the private courses in winnipeg are like 20 30 grand jeez jeez because i got a buddy at uh nyaqua and it was i think it's like 10 grand maybe buy-in and that was like uh they had like a promotion on for to get new members like younger guys in so you gotta have some cake and God. that's actually that's a good that's a good lead into what we're gonna discuss tonight which is uh how we how we would improve the game of golf and we have some of our own ideas and we have a bunch of good stuff from uh our our uh, followers and fans and friends on instagram so but before that we get some housekeeping and drums what's going on in your world buddy yo not much did you guys uh did you guys get hit with the kerfuffle with uh, Bell phones on Monday morning? Did you see no, this? Kel did, though. So I woke up, my alarm was going off, <laughs> and uh, hit snooze, and then all of a sudden the list is like, you're going to be late. I'm like, what? We look at my phone, and it's just after 7, and I was like, it's fucking 7 o'clock. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she rolled over and went back to sleep, so I went to sleep for another 15 minutes again. Woke up, my alarm, came back, <laughs> came down to have a shower, about to step in the shower, go to turn my phone on to play music. All of a sudden, it skipped an hour ahead, and I was like, what the fuck is this? So I'm late for work all of a sudden, and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> when was this? What day? Monday morning. So oh, like they, I thought it was Sunday for some reason. Well, they screwed up with, uh, they did um, the fallback a, a week early yeah. on some phones. No. Yeah. So I showed up to work a half hour late and I'm like, you guys are not going to believe this, but I swear to Christ, my phone was all fucked up. And then, so like I Googled it and it was a bunch of bell customers that had this, but like, so you were the, right. It was late I was, of that whole ordeal. Huh? Yeah. You were the only one that was late. Yeah. Wow. But I guess it was only like four, 4,000 customers like across the country. I see. So I was a lucky one. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's just, just retarded. It happened to Kel too, and she like watched it happen in real time because she was uh, at work. She worked uh, Sunday night. Oh, like she saw. So she, she got to go back home earlier. Yeah, like she all of a sudden it uh, they gained an hour. So I don't I don't know what ended up happening. I think I think it got reset to normal, right? So it would have just been just leveled out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like right but by as the I, time she would have went to go home, she would right, have, it would have been back to normal. Right as I hit play, all of a sudden it, it flashed and went an hour ahead, and I was like, "Whoa, uh oh!" <laughs> <laughs> so I drove like a madman to get to work within like five minutes. So yeah, that was a good start to the week. Got a speeder. Yeah, buddy got a speeder uh, on the old highway out of Carberry, that three fifty one highway. Oh yeah. And- I think he was doing 140 and it's a 90 highway. $800. Did he get his license taken away? No, if he was going, so it must have been 100 because if he was going 50 over the speed limit, he would have got it taken away. 
because that's reckless. Is that what yeah. they call it? Yeah. Yeah. 800 <laughs> bullets on the way home from work. <laughs> <laughs> Working for- he was ripping to like get the kids to like practice or something, or I don't know what happened, but yeah. Yikes. Just a tough day. That's brutal. So, How many, uh, what's the most expensive ticket you've had? My eight? stuff. Yeah. For who? Both years. Uh, like traffic ticket or yeah, <laughs> five grand ticket. <laughs> five grand. I forgot the five grand ticket. We can we can walk past that one if you want. All right, I got a. Uh, I think it was just. Uh, there's a speeding ticket and a seatbelt ticket in the park. I think that was like four sixty or five hundred bucks or something. Yeah, got to reduce. Don't wanna, you don't want to hear my. Uh, you got to reduce. Like you went in and pled guilty or what? No, I just like sob story about being a broke. Yeah, but you went into like the magistrate there. Yeah. Well, you have to. Pretty well have to. Well, I tried We're writing a shot, letter. Right? I just. For, when I was like 17, I tried writing a letter and never even heard an answer back. <laughs> <laughs> they just threw it out. But then uh, I went a couple times after that, and every time it got reduced either ha- in half or something. So, yeah, you don't want to know my uh, my criminal past. With the- I lost my license twice, I think, for th- for two months and then three months. And let me tell you, once you have your license at that age and then you lose it, it's uh, – I don't know if there'd be a worse feeling than being in high school without a driver's license. Because you, was you finally get. Well, oh, I, I had like five or six speeding tickets before I even graduated, <laughs> and, and I think I had uh, three seatbelt tickets too. Seatbelt tickets were the most painful because it like so dumb, so dumb. I got I got a, <laughs> a seatbelt ticket in the passenger seat. <laughs> I got one of those too. I don't see it. <laughs> well, like you have time to put the fucking seatbelt on. Put it on. I There's just no hate time. wearing seatbelts. There's no time. Well, like when they pull you over, you can put it on because then they can't prove that. Oh, I know. Off. No, no, no. I I did that obviously. Like, but you're 17 years old. You got this. This huge cop comes up. He's like, "I saw you. You weren't wearing your seatbelt." I'm like, "Yeah, Mr. Brewer. Actually, <laughs> Mr. Brewer, I actually was wearing it." He's like, no, I saw you. You weren't. I'm like, oh, you're right. Sorry, bud. Well, what are you going to do? You're not going to like, you're not going to argue with him and say like, I don't know. That never gets you anywhere. Well, you could have. The times that I, the times that I did get off of tickets and which has actually happened quite a bit, even two months ago, it happened. Do you remember when but, I was with you? Yeah. But also like, just shut up and like, be nice. You know what I mean? Like, there's no sense of fighting back. Cause that's kind of what a lot of them are looking for almost is. A reason to give you shit so be nice have everything ready and you'll get off remember when we got uh pulled over that one time and you didn't have your <laughs> you didn't have your license on you me yeah yeah we I got a pulled, bad kid we got pulled over in the grand prix and the guy's like why are we going so fast well you know i was just telling drums here <laughs> that i haven't gone fast in this car in a while so I kind of opened it up a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, you're an idiot. Didn't I say that it was a good song on the radio or something? And I, oh. Or maybe I told that to a different cop. And I was then, like, I was listening to this song and there's nothing that I could do about it. I just was speeding. And now I got nowhere to be. I was just speeding. Yeah, we were like going to Tim Hortons or something stupid. <laughs> and then he's like, I don't have I don't have my license though. And the guy's like being unreal about it. And he's like, well, what's your name? So you say Jorn Headley. So he goes back to the car, comes back. He's like, we have a pretty big problem here. And he's like, what? I don't have like a Jordan Headley in my system. And then like, we kind of just go white. I'm like, oh, we're fucked now. But then it's under Thomas. So uh, the guy, so he, the guy's given a fake name, no license. <laughs> <laughs> Speeding for no reason. For absolutely no reason. Well, I mean, that's just being a kid. You got to learn somehow. <laughs> just, just happy I didn't die in any accidents because there was probably a few times. But what's, but, uh, your, anyways. what's your total what's your total contribution to the police force salary then? Co oh, too much. A few things that'll make you sick to your stomach is think about how much money you've given to the government over your life and how much I've given to the 
Would that be going to the government too, or where does that go to? Yeah. Yeah. Because the government goes to the the police. Provincial government, doesn't it? Yeah, probably. I've only got about 800. I had a 400 open alcohol driving. Yeah. So I was rather lucky that was all I got. You would, I can't believe you'd ever drink and drive, like have a beer while you're driving. That doesn't S- seem like a silly, a real thing. And I was like 16. No, no gum in the car. 16. So was, <laughs> no gum in the car. So I'm eating chapstick, trying to get my breath. Oh down my there. god, it was a shit show. Just kills get the golf stuff, you guys. Car, eh? <laughs> Jeez, Louise. I'm I'm gonna have to try and be regal tonight because um, me and drums always get off the rails here, so I'm gonna have to try to steer us in the right direction. So as mentioned, we're going through uh, our ideas, a uh, little brainstorm session, some some ideas we have to improve the game of golf. So as the stuff on Instagram said, uh, the game of golf has grown exponentially. I think over the past couple of years, just due to the fact that it was a lot of uh, it was the only thing that people could do for a while. So there's a lot of new golfers, including Dal, not a new golfer, but a, a more consistently, a more consistent golfer. Not the fact that you were, I mean, on and off the course, right? Like yeah, your like skill and your golf playing. time. Yeah, like getting out there way more before it was always just a couple scramble tournaments and a couple piss ups with the fellas. So you didn't really give a shit about what you were doing. And now the last few years, well, actually since I started dating Danielle, she's a pretty big golfer too. So it's a hell of a way to kill a Saturday or Sunday to get out for a round. And, you know, when you're not guzzling 15 to 20 beers, <laughs> uh, you could just piece a few things together once in a while. Got my yeah, first ever right. Eagle, our last round of the year there. That was kind of good. Oh boy. What hole? Well, yeah, we were doing a scramble, but Dal actually had to hit every shot on the hole. On six? Yeah. Uh, six, yeah, six at Gilbert. Oh boy, and it was a hell of a five with too. the dog leg left bomb. Trying to bomb, yeah, like downhill, right to sidewinder. Oh, Jabba the Hut got behind us and started barking. Uh-oh. Didn't you beat Reg that round? <laughs> we were on the same team. Oh, yeah, I think Del- we won though. Dow played really good, and uh, Rigo had an off day, so I, I'm sure you know Rigo probably would have won. But Dow did. I played have above real game. expectations. Yeah. When the teams were picked, I outplayed my ranking for sure. Yes, definitely. Um. So, anyways, with the gate, with the growth that the game has seen. Um, you always want to keep things moving along and, and with a bunch of different people involved in it now too, uh, the game will have to evolve. So this is just something that we came up with our ideas along with our uh, friends on Instagram's ideas. So um, we'll start it off. Although do we have any housekeeping or no? Not really. I guess just a big shout out to uh, Reg's boy. Reg has been talking about yeah. uh, this young gentleman for as long as we've been doing the podcast. So a year and a bit here, uh, but Taylor Pendrith had an unbelievable tournament. Uh, this will be, I think this was his first tournament with uh, status, I believe. Uh, but anyways, really? I think so. First or second. Uh, but he had three really good rounds and then the wheels kind of came off on the, on Sunday. But I mean, if that's your first in contention tournament, uh, I mean, Sundays, but that kid, it seems like, there is a really, oh, yeah. really good future with that kid. He statistically is like the best driver on tour by quite a bit, I think. So it's going to be awesome to watch that that kid grow up on tour. No kidding. If you can put yourself in that position going into Sunday, that's like it's so rare on the PGA to be in that position and win for the first time. Never mind people who have been there. Like it's it's not often that people who are leading after. 54 actually win the tournament right? right never mind when it's kind of your first time there so i i don't he, he would have been disappointed because he would For have sure. been checking social media and and uh every, everybody all the golf fans in canada were all over it because right. he had a really hot streak there on saturday eh? yeah yeah he went crazy and um like for sure he would be disappointed 
but I think at the same time, we know that uh, the coach he's got behind him is going to make sure that he learns from Sunday and yep. everything that we've seen from this kid. And in, in, I don't even know how old this guy is. He's probably not even a kid um, from the past he's year. younger than us. <laughs> from the past year is he's just it has incredible growth and uh, we're, we're going to see it going forward. Yep. Totally. Uh, one more housekeeping thing. Uh, we had uh, we had a post last week about uh, our our time in uh, Moon Lake. So we had a picture of uh, Rigo's stag there, and uh, we had some. There was ten golf hats, ten king golf hats in the picture, and uh, so we had kind of a contest of who would. Uh, <laughs> did you? Is that what you guessed, Del? Yep. So, That's anyways, why I'm on the pod. I <laughs> <laughs> this was this was the very special uh, prize that we had. So, no, uh, we said that we were going to do it on the pod, but um, due to the last minute switch up here, we didn't have time to do that. So, we'll do it next week, um, and somebody will take home a prize. But in the meantime, Dal is a special guest tonight. That's what his his prize. And is, I guess guessed the right, right number, so, so I win. Yeah. So let's kick her off your. Uh, Drums, you got an interest, interesting one to start here. Uh, it's a little aggressive, but uh, yeah, that's it's, okay. it's quite aggressive. Uh, Jordy, Lutz, <laughs> Jordy Lutz says, people who don't fix divots or ball marks should be shot. <laughs> it's fair. It's not even a little pee pee whack, just straight death. <laughs> you got to go execution style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So do you have to um, hire another guy as an executioner then on the course? Yep. Yep. He goes, there's an executioner at every green. And <laughs> if you don't, you you get cer- ceremoniously uh, executed on the next tee box. <laughs> <laughs> I, I completely agree with him other than the, the killing, but. Yeah. If I don't have to murder anybody, then for sure. That's good. <laughs> I'm in. I'm on I board. find the divots are a lot harder to replace like on the courses around here, especially like I'll, I'll take a divot and it goes into 10 pieces. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Go and pick up a little small piece and put it in a huge hole. Yeah. Especially when uh, the ground's really dry and yeah, like hard, even if, if you get a divot, like it could just end up everywhere. You gotta go piece it. It's a little puzzle. Like we're but not all those, playing in they the... have uh, like the sand on the carts, you know, like if they know that it's going to be yeah. dry year, Grab a couple. It's a, you know, as long as it's not a member cart, should be sand and seed to replace yeah. stuff. Same as a tee box. True. Yep. True. I agree with that. Um, there are some courses that have that. For there's sure. lots, lots of courses do. Oh yeah. And it should almost be mandatory. Yeah. But just I don't know who's. I don't know who's fixed. Like, what do you think the majority of people? would fix them like what's the percentage of people that would actually fix them fix divots yeah not very high two percent yeah so i don't know if they'd just be wasting money getting all that shit together for the carts and stuff well but you also have to train people like that's kind of this whole thing right not train but you know what i mean yeah you actually do have to train people i think you do i know dal gives us a hard time on here all the time because it sounds like we're talking down to people but the point is like (laughs) when there is newer golfers starting like they there is things to learn about golf, believe it or not. And uh, not that we are experts by any means, but I mean, if, if you could listen to an episode and maybe take one thing from it or, or f- in five episodes, I think that that's good for the game. So anyways, ball marks for sure. Absolutely must. No excuse not to do that. Right. So Divots try to try to be better. Like even if yeah, you're just you can. conscious about it and if you take a, a beaver pelt, Put that put that puppy back. Very good like, shot. Yeah, okay. Let's let's move on because we could spend shot. time on that. Um so the grip garage and YYC, is that uh, Edmonton or Calgary? YYC. That's Calgary. Yeg is Calgary. Oh yeah, Winnipeg's Yeg, right? Y E G Y E G. Yeah. Uh so anyways, the grip garage, YYC, uh said strokes per hole. So if you're if you're four over, I guess you're if you're shooting nine on a par four, you just pick it up. But he also said start a close, start using closer tees. So I don't know if he means like next hole, do that or 
like next round you're out there but yeah i i don't know if he is just recommending you reevaluate things or <laughs> or he means like the next hole get get up 100 yards see how it goes it kind of depends on the format too like in men's night that usually happens if you're you know two in the bush or you're hacking around you'll just pick it up right i don't know that you could actually do that in the tournament or something like that but so i don't know if that's like a rule change or just, just like a etiquette I, thing yeah he's probably just meaning like if you're out with your buddies on a, a yeah. saturday and you're four over like again we're, we're not we're not meaning to talk down if if people aren't kind of up to that we've been there abilities but yeah we i'm i'm the first guy to pick up a ball and go sit in the cart yeah yeah like depends on the situation you're in right like if you're if you're out there and you're trying to get better you might as well put it out yep or if you're paying 200 bucks at predator ridge and you're you know and nothing's really on the line just in that case i would say just just draw pick it up out of the bush and just drop it and play it like don't right take yeah. yourself right out of the hole right right yeah just be aware that you're not holding people up or anything yeah but exactly yeah like i'm probably not if i'm dropping 200 bones i'm not picking anything up ever no that's fair um that kind of ties into landy cameron's uh next one which is pace of play uh keeping everything moving i think that uh, would definitely help if you're if you've got a couple guys that are out of the hole and they pick up that'll help speed things along everything yep. you can do to help speed things along just playing a bit quicker not taking as much yep. time setting up that type of thing and i actually sent uh landon a message after i saw that to see what his suggestions are but as i'm looking at this list like going with the last one too as you said drums but going down the list like a lot of these changes would actually improve the pace of play so right i think if you implemented a few of these things it actually would it would do that uh inherently so it's a good one uh keith real says no dress code which uh we've we've kind of got into this a little bit before but not in any extreme detail and i don't know what we need to i think my only thing with that is no jeans on the course but you guys seem to have different thoughts on that no, I think I was always of that. No jeans, kind of everything else. We said no tank tops, I think, last time when we were talking about it too. Mm -hmm. Sleeves and no jeans, and then you're pretty well good. Like hoodies, who cares? It's a sweatshirt. Like, relax. So what are you wearing if you're not wearing jeans then? Like some slacks like or like... Uh, or golf so You're going to get rid of the dress code and bring in slacks. <laughs> well i prefer you to be in slacks over jeans or like yeah, uh, and a tie and a hoodie yeah slacks and a hoodie and a tie yeah i'll get my sport coat as well <laughs> but like some know. It's just... nice like lululemon pants or something like that like that's fine yeah. too well think of that round we just did at gilbert there when it was whatever that was east birthday I think half were in jeans, weren't they? I don't know. I actually didn't even notice. It was cold. People were hoodies, jeans, bundled up, trying to stay warm. I might yeah. be second guessing the jeans thing too. I don't think jeans is. I don't think there's anything wrong with jeans. I don't know. It's, mine's it's mine's the same with. Uh, mine's definitely. You got to have sleeves. I think somebody said last time no sleeves, but yeah. uh, you got to have. You can't be wandering around with a wife beater on. I still think you. You look silly if you're wearing jeans, but same time, it depends. Everything depends. Like last round of the year at Gilbert, when it's when it's ten degrees outside, probably different than when you're going to Predator Ridge night or uh, or Predator Ridge or something. So I think you have to keep in mind where you are and just be aware of. There's, I don't think that there needs to be a, a clear cut answer to anything. Just kind of use your use logic and common sense, which is lacking in the world. But <clears throat> anyways. I think in that one, it's really more for like the clubs that um, like promote like full dress codes. Yeah. Like those. Yeah, can, I, th I think that there is an unnecessary thing that can be relaxed. Like yeah. the, going to the weed city and you've got jeans or whatever on, like, I don't think that's kind of what they're meaning. I think just more like the high end courses that like force you to have uh, a collar and, and slacks on. Cause they and, will kick you off the course, right? Yeah. If you don't have that. Yeah. They won't allow you on. Or if you don't have golf shoes. Right. 
Pretty crazy. So I I agree with uh, Keith there. It could be a little bit more chill. I think that a lot of the higher end courses think that they're, you know, the cat's ass and whatever you can be the cat's ass in other ways, but you still have to uh, be a welcoming and and comfortable setting for people. Those higher end courses aren't going to attract the guys in white feeders and jeans. True. You know what I mean? Like if I'm going out in a stained uh, muscle shirt, Got a barbecue stand on your white t-shirt? Yeah, if I got barbecue sauce on my shirt, I'm probably not looking to go to the top course in Winnipeg. I'm probably, <laughs> you know, try to find something that's like 50, 60 bucks. I can go whack it around. Everybody's going to leave me alone. No one's going to be upset. True. Yeah. But it, so in the case of like, uh, who the hell was it? Bruce North? He, he was going to, Rigo told the story. He was going to, he had the chance to play with Mike Weir and uh, Bruce North just wears like, I don't know what you'd call them, like kind of sandals or like slip ons or something like that. I think like he, he takes them off though. Like he'll go barefoot when he swings. And no, shit. I don't, th- I maybe, but I don't like think loafers? so. But anyways, like, oh, loafers, he has like yeah. yeah. But he, I think he kicks them off so, when he goes to swing sometimes too. Oh, maybe, but they wouldn't let him on the course because of that. So I think that that's a little bit silly. Yeah. This next one uh, uh, from yeah. Keebs, our buddy uh, Keebs, I completely agree with, and it's never made sense in my mind. Uh, and he says, guy who gets the hole in one buys the drinks, question mark, ludicrous. And I completely agree. You got to buy the entire course drinks because you had this amazing event happen to you? Screw that. You should be pumping me up, getting me full exactly you in it in any sport you win something right people are buying you drinks that makes no sense to me we gotta do some we gotta put reggie on on the trail here and do some digging as to yeah. who came up with this bullshit i think it's a hundred percent the guys in his foursome were pissed that he died <laughs> and they did and we're like you're yeah. buying now but like but still i can't i don't agree maybe, with it See, I could see it. Say you won at the Kings tournament and you won 10 grand. You spend a thousand bucks, whatever. Cause you, you won 10,000 bucks. You right. still net nine. You got a hole in one at the end of the day, you win, but yeah. you get one at, uh, you know, wherever at men's night at men's night. And you're going to be out three or 400 or 500 bucks. No, thanks. Cause you, you had the highlight of your golf life. Um, and I said the exact same thing to Keeves. I said, I couldn't agree more. And he said that uh, his idea was that golf courses should have an insurance policy for that. Or a pot like you. Or some sort of pot, right. And so if that happens, that's that's who pays for the drinks. Right. I just don't understand the logic. And it was actually, um, so when I went through the CPA program, when you did, when you wrote your final exam, like the CFI or the UFI, it used to be called, if you passed it, you had to host a party and provide alcohol and stuff like that. And uh, that's changed in the last five years too. It's, it's actually paid for by the firm now, but before you had to host the party and you had to pay for everything because you achieved this. For the whole firm? For the firm. So like you're just getting, you're just getting into the workforce. You got a shitload of student debt. And now you got a thousand dollar party. You got to throw for like the for richest nothing. people. Yeah, exactly. I shouldn't say the richest people, but people who make more money than you. Yeah. Stupid. So dumb. That's the same. That's the same as like in the show, like the NHL rookie dinners and stuff, you know, yeah, like the exact that's, same. That's just tradition. You're this one is, is different from golf. Right. But that's just cutting your chops. Like, you know, paying your dues. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's expensive. But at least it's not like college sports initiations. <laughs> so true. We won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to buzz through a few quick ones here because I don't know. Brett Saunders, he, he had a weird one here. So he said, playing with the boys, playing with friends, playing for fun, all bad ideas, do not play golf. So I'm not sure if uh, – He's playing a prank on us or maybe, serious. Maybe his old lady was getting himself into trouble. I think his old lady was watching him type and he had to type something <laughs> in there. 
to me, it sounds like he, he probably likes to uh, throw a bit of money around on the course. <laughs> he drinks on the course, go out after he's done golfing, go to the Key Rock, yeah. after done eating. Maybe. Yeah, it turns into a whole whole day. Brett sounds like a good time, actually. I would love to so, golf with Brett. So, Drums, you said that his wife maybe got on there, and it's very possible she could have hacked his account and put that because he also said how much I'm able to play. So maybe his wife or girlfriend is actually restricting his golf and she wanted mm. to sewer him on the King golf, uh, account. Must be. So anyways, look at that. Then, uh, Jay, Jason, uh, Corbett, he said putting. So I'm not sure if he can, was confused with the question. Maybe he thinks that that was something that he wants to improve it as part of his game, but, uh, I don't know how you improve putting. Although, I did see a putter and it was on TikTok today. And it was like, uh, <laughs> it was one really... that stands up. No, no, those are wild though. <laughs> but it, this was like probably, a, it looked like it was 100 years old or just like some weird that somebody made. But it was like a real, about a half an inch high. And then closer to the toe of the putter, it went to ball size. Oh. So instead of like hitting it in the middle of the putter, like you usually would, all the same height. Uh, it was really narrow and then it got bigger towards the toe about the size of a golf ball. Weird. So somebody posted it and said, what kind of putter in this and where is it from? I'll, I'll post it on our King golf account or our kingdom account or whatever, but it's really weird. I've never seen it before. I seen a meme you today. That that... One where it was like, uh, it was a single club that had a ratchet on it and you could change the loft of the club all the way from like a three, <laughs> like a loft wedge or something. <laughs> It had like no. two little gears, so every time you dialed it back, it changed the loft. So you just take one club so golfing. Yeah, so for those like wild tournaments they have, where you only get one or two clubs, you just whip that thing out. <laughs> whatever you is, need. Uh, is it like those weights? Those weights that uh, you oh, just yeah. have one of them, and you can you can change it and adjust it to go up or down in in weight. Same kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it just kind of ratchets, and then you got your three iron, and then you got your four, your five, your six, and it just keeps increasing the loft for you. <laughs> Seems like so, we should bring it back. I agree. Um, that's That would be unreal. But drums, mention Foxy's here because it ties into uh, to Dal's point. Foxy says 14 clubs in the bag, still have to find the hole, no? So he's saying that why is there a restriction on the amount of clubs you can have? Yeah. Which I don't really get. Either. Dell's, Dell's saying you only need one. Foxy's saying that you should have more than 14. Foxy says or you should have just 25. saying that you should be able to do whatever you want. And I kind of agree because you could have a thousand clubs and uh, still shoot the same probably. Yeah. Because then you're just going to have more decisions to make. Like at our level, you 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 might screw yourself up more with more clubs. Like I for sure you would. would. Yeah. Like if you could add a club, what would you even add? Like if I had five clubs, I would shoot the exact same score. Yeah. It'd be an extra wedge, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. That was probably just a number that got thrown out for like the PGA rule book or something. You only needed a yeah. they needed number that covered enough clubs for everybody. And then, okay, this is rule. Right. F. And you think, clubs. You think about rules like that, Dal, it's like, well, why did that rule have started? And mm -hmm. it usually just takes one asshole to come to the club yeah. with 300 clubs in his bag, all like significantly different in loft. And they're like, okay, well, we got to shut this down. So we have to come up with a rule. Yeah, it's like yeah, going to be. Rodney Dangerfield from Caddyshack showed up and he had weapons <laughs> galore in his bag. Yeah, it was all wood wood sticks so they were just making them in their backyard <laughs> whittling away yeah. Degree. <laughs> yeah so I, I think we're all kind of in agreement with that you do have to have some sort of limit but why why, why is the number 14 yeah yeah but like don't you still have two drivers in your bag drums no well, i got like two putters there's like random clubs in there that never get pulled out but i don't i think i'd be deeper than 14 <laughs> Maybe it's for anger, just so you can rage. Yeah, I get to snap one. Yeah. That was, that was one of the really early Kingdom uh, 
junk, junk drawers was uh, the unbreakable club that you could just mash against anything and <laughs> nothing would break it. He could hit it against a tree. I think everybody, we might actually come out with that. It has to be like rubber though, right? No, I think it'd have to be like iron. Huh. That hurts you. Yeah. It would hurt you, but you would do it less. <laughs> Rubber would also hurt if it rebound if it wrapped around the tree and cut you in the knob on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> did I think you we guys get a few prototypes? Did you guys see the meme today? I forget who uh, reposted it, but it was this kids like check out this sick putter I found at the uh, the thrift store for a dollar oh nine, and it was a Scotty Cameron putter. No, nice. <laughs> yeah. Imagine just grabbing a five hundred dollar putter for a dollar. Yeah, you have to wonder how things end up in that situation, but there are some cir- circumstances and some silly people out there who really wouldn't even know what the hell Scotty Cameron is. So yeah, exactly. Oh, a state sale for sure. Yeah, or yeah, the wife. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, a divorce. Yeah, yeah. Clean them out, or her. Out. It could have been the off the putter. Maybe it was a woman's putter. We don't know. It could have been a woman's putter, and the guy didn't know. Cannot, but, uh, we cannot make assumptions this day and age. Nope. Anyways, uh, Teddy Watowich says uh, lefties, so we won't get into that because I fuck them. Yeah, just em. get rid of them. Yeah, lefties. I all. guess so. Get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, this is like Jordy Lutz's thing. Just execute all the lefties. Well, for what happens if you don't fix your ball mark? All of a sudden, the golf course is going to turn into squid games here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Um, and then we have, did I miss any there? Oh, Trevor Dickey said his skill set wants to improve. So he kind of said the same thing as, uh, Jason there, but, uh, we'll go to Trevor Funk in, uh, Winnipeg. And he said more nine hole courses. And that's, uh, another thing that we love here on the podcast is nine hole courses. Uh, some, someday we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of the nines, but I agree. I love nines and I really wish the nine hole courses would kind of do like Cirrus does and make a big, uh, there's a few holes in Cirrus where it's a big difference between the front nine and the back nine. So there's a par three, I think it's number two. It goes back about 40 yards. Uh, so that changes things quite a bit. And then just a few different tees uh, along the way that really changed the course and eight is a par three and it, the, the back tee is really hard without without a bounds right on the left side. I love that hole, actually. It is a sick hole, no, but it's hard. It. Yeah. Because there's that huge overhanging tree on the right. And then just a cliff. And then left side is all out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that hole so, a lot. I like that course yeah. a lot. Good course. Oh, such a good course. I didn't even know there was a back nine. No, there's not. Well, just there's not. <clears throat> they do like a modified tee boxes for the if you yeah. go for the extra nine, so you can yeah. hit from a different spot. Yeah, same as we played that in rivers. rivers yeah, in like rivers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now one hole completely changed. Remember, it was like uh, you drove it. I think Jory you drove the green. It was yeah. like two sixty or oh, two seventy yeah. carry or something. With the kind of the water in front there. Yeah, yeah. And, I think it was just too dry, so it was all just kind of like bush and blind. stuff, but. It completely changed the hole. And I think yeah. that was, you can do that with lots of nine holes. Yeah. Just, just boxes. It, Cause that one didn't just go straight back. It went like kind of to tucked. the left. Yeah. It kind of tucked. Yeah. Away. It went, yeah. It went hard left. Yep. I agree. Um, so what do we got here, drums? What's the last one? The last one was Keith. I didn't really. Yeah, Keith I didn't Gun- really understand this one. Keith Gunning says tea times every 15 minutes. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I think you got to have them a little m- more together just to keep pace. What are they play. now, like 10? I think they're eight. Okay. I thought they got backed up with uh, COVID. They did. I think eight's too, then- too close right now. And then they got really jammed up when we were only allowed to golf with our selves for a <laughs> month. <laughs> oh yeah, only your own house. Oh, oh man. Just quickly on that, looking back, I mean, we, we we called bullshit on a lot of things, but like the pins, the garbage cans, 
the ball markers <laughs> garbage and cans golfing hilarious. by yourself. Like there's, there's no place on earth that would be safer than a golf course from a virus. There's just not you're outside. You're getting some vitamin D, which is a conspiracy theory, but you're getting the vitamin D. Um, and you're never close to each other. Like, I don't know. Even if you're on a cart, you're outside. It's just, it was nonsense. You're moving. Anyways. The wind is moving. Exactly. Okay. So that, that could, oh no. So that was the end of kind of our, uh, our individual ones. But now we have three that uh, three people said each. So we, we grouped these ones together because they are all similar. And, you know, you, you think about this in a very small sample size, there was three people who said the exact same thing three different times. So there, there's something there, I think, for, you know, if, if say, th three out of 20 people feel that way, maybe things should change. So, um, Drums, what's the first one here? First one we got is from uh, Jay Sunart, Josh Bevins. Uh, what do we got here? Chad Dupree. And yep. uh, they all said no OB, make everything lateral, one-stroke penalty. So you're not, so you're not screwing around the whole time looking for lost balls. Take the one stroke, either. I don't know what if this is going to be. Drop it in the middle, play it lateral from where it went in. I guess is what they're saying. Yep. And then continue on instead of wasting. What What's the actual allotted time you, you're given to look for a ball? Five minutes. Well, I think it's only three minutes on tour now. Okay, but so. But I mean, when we're playing, it's usually about five minutes, like for whatever reason, but if yeah, that, or zero. Yeah. I've just go quick scan. <laughs> if I can't see it. It depends what's on the line, really. Yeah. If, if you got a hundred bucks riding on the line, you have to find that golf ball. Yeah. The five minutes is getting used for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like but, in men's uh, night and stuff like that, you certainly do not need, need to waste all that time looking for one golf ball i agree and if Take everybody the stroke and just the, keep going if everybody in the league is playing the same rules and even yep. if even if uh i guess for that would have to be the same just for handicap purposes but yeah kind of my thoughts on that is as landon mentioned pace of play that would speed things up exponentially and uh in my opinion there's i've played a few courses wheat city being one where one year uh part of the course was out of bounds and then the next year it was a red stake. Right. So what is the difference? If you're hitting it out of play, what is, why is one red and one two strokes? There's no reason for that. I yeah. don't think. Yeah. I don't get it either. So we're in agreement it's just with these boys. It's confusing too. Yeah. There's, there's a freaking a white stake, a red stake, a yellow stake. And uh, like for people, like for people who are trying to get into golf, just keep things freaking simple. Like yep. wherever it goes in, take one stroke, continue on. Yep. I like that. And three other guys agree. And I think that that should be seriously considered uh, in the game of golf. So we're not going to have any impact on that, but we can bitch about it in the meantime. So here's another one. We had three people say, so Sung Nation, I think his name's Eric Sung. I think he's in Ontario. Uh Eric Song, Thomas Friesen, Kale Mitchell all said free relief from divots. So I guess uh, our group of listeners and us three for sure wouldn't be as affected by this because we usually play, you know, fix it in the fairway. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of guys fix it in the rough even. So <laughs> this isn't real applicable to us, but I think they're meeting on tour. Right. And uh, I would say that I agree. I don't, I've never actually heard an argument um, like against changing it or giving relief. Right? Like I can't, Agreed. I can't picture what the argument is. Other than like play it as it lies, I get, but. Yeah, I had to yeah, take it off. Right. If, uh, if Timmy in front of me here didn't leave this beaver tail, it wouldn't obstruct my ball. Yeah. Plus, so like, how is the, that in the PGA? They don't fix the divots, do they? I don't think so. Or do they? Like the caddy does. Do they? Yeah, I think so. Because you always see overhead shots, and you can see every 
divot because they all land in the same spot basically like right. there's 100 golfers and like 80 of them are within 10, 10 yards, yards. Yeah. so it's not like weed city where you got you have guys hitting 150 yards and some guys hitting 300 like these are all congested it's not a rare thing to land in a divot in the pga tour so no, i, don't I agree so. with those guys yeah yeah definitely makes it and there's been uh there's been enough i think vocal you know people with a voice talk about it that it, it, it actually might change i don't know i think like a bigger problem of golf is we got to get some new blood in making decisions mm-hmm Agreed. Yeah, we're all drumsy. Uh, so then we got, uh, who do we have here? Tim Maynard, Talbs04, and Robbie Hop, And they are bitching about prices. <laughs> uh, no, I completely agree. Big money at for, Menard. <laughs> for the most part, it's a very expensive game. Um, clubs, memberships everything's expensive even just going and playing around is is it can be expensive i don't know how you fix that though yep agreed you can't like my i get paid and my unfortunately the, that is the exact same as the rest of the world prices are only going to go up manitoba is probably the cheapest place in north america to golf right and kind of my opinion on that would be you can really spend as much money as you want. Like I have, you guys would probably be the same as me, but uh, like my irons are 10 years old. One of my wedges is 15 years old. I replace putters and drivers once in a while. But if you, Mm -hmm. if you have the same clubs and you play the same round or the same course for the majority of the year, it's actually not that expensive. Right, it's, like it's it, it, guys, certainly, it certainly can be. Like if you do a go get new clubs or whatever, half of your clubs every year, and your membership's three or four grand, like it, yeah, that oh yeah. that can add up. Uh, That's but what yeah, I mean. no, I'm kind of the same way. Like my irons are four years old, and they're like mid level irons that were three hundred bucks for the set. Like it's not like I went crazy. So it is kind of you can somewhat control it too but at the same time you're not getting like a set of clubs for a hundred bucks and um a membership for 200 bucks it's it is going to be a little expensive do you remember when we were kids and our our whole membership was a hundred bucks a year those are giving away free if you're under 18 actually where off dolphin lake was free under 18 what what Uh, trying to get the that's good. Kids, kids out there. a lot of that's good. That's a good. Yeah, that's great. But uh, yeah, I mean, the the point I guess is there's guys who spend like sixty wherever what Predator Ridge now you're talking sixty grand for a membership yeah. or a buy in, yeah. and they probably have like ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars worth of clubs in their bag, but you can also play it at a economically efficient way, like you mm-hmm. can. I mean, anything costs money to do nowadays. You go out for six hours, uh, three times a week, and you're, anything you do for six hours, you're going to be paying for. Go to the arcade for six hours and see how long that or how much that gets into your wallet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't think oh, yeah, that, that it's that money. expensive. Like, it's it's just like any like sport though, really like. Yes. A hockey sticks now is 400 bucks and a pair of skates is 1200 bucks. And like, it's just, is what it is. Things I do are think that there has to be a cap though. Hey, like there has to be a cap on the, the price of hockey sticks and the, a new driver. And uh, Not at some point, you just have to them, say, I yeah, know, like those, uh, like the, what is it? Those homas or homas? Like, why is yeah. the driver th- three grand? Because some up and, it'll uh, pay it. Holy. What's the other one? PXG. Yeah. Yeah, those shit's I'd love to, like, I would like to try those though. It's gonna take like three or four years of nobody buying the that year's model of stuff to come out for them to start low. Right. Yeah. 
And I mean, you look at anything, you look at the car market, right? Like there's cars that are worth a million bucks. There's a certain percentage of the population who can't afford that stuff. So they do, there's a market and they make it for those people. But for the majority of people like us, that's too much money. And, and we go with lesser, you know, less expensive clubs. So I don't think that it'll ever end, but you know, it's like uh, freaking speaking of vehicles, like headlights, it seems like every year the headlights get brighter and brighter and brighter. And then I don't know where that ends either. Like they're going to be able to see into outer space soon with the, you know, the new vehicles have like those blue, blue lights or. Yeah. Oh, they're so bright. I can't stand them. Holy cow. I can't stand them either. This. <coughs> yeah. Right. Bless you. It's to drive with though. Be yeah, okay. True. No, but it's, <laughs> it's not nice to drive. Into. against yeah okay so that wraps up uh the the friends and followers segment of it now we'll quickly we each have one and we'll uh do those and then we'll wrap things up for the evening no reggie yet i'm surprised i thought he would have Loser. poked his head in here dally hit us up with yours well, it's not actually mine. I saw it on the Instagrams. I think it was Zyre Golf had it. But it was um, just changing the names of the tee markers instead of being like junior ladies, men's, whatever, the tips or pros. Just put it as your handicap. You know, if you're a sub-80 golfer, you can play from the tips. If you're 80 to 90, you're playing whites. If you're 100 plus, you're at the reds. And if you're a buck 20, you're playing from the drop zone or something like i think that's amazing because like right now if i if i lined up at the reds like i just get worked over for play, <laughs> right? you know? like, yeah it's all ego right now right yeah exactly right like i'm not lining up at the ladies tees <laughs> if i if i go out with you guys who are good you guys want to play from the back and I'm like, well, okay, I'll play from the back. Like I shouldn't be here, but I am. Right. But if it was if it was by your handicap, you guys would go to the back. I would go to the whites, and you know, like you just go wherever you fit in, and no one would say, no one would think twice about it. Yeah, I guess like a big part of that too has to be who you're playing with, like the stigma of it around being from the from the ladies, like you said. Like if everybody in the group is on board and not like going to chirp the guy, I think it could be successful, but even if it's still at the intermediate tease or something like you're going to get chirped. Like, I don't think that's going to stop. Does that eliminate handicaps in men's night? It shouldn't. <laughs> you're going to get chirped. I don't think it would either. Like I, mean, I was talking to Grady a couple of weeks ago and, and he kind of mentioned this too. And I said, I agree that it would make things a lot more fair you, st you still couldn't get rid of the handicaps because a lot of this for the high handicaps a lot of their strokes are around the greens like the chipping um and approach shots but then i thought you know if if you're if you start further up you can advance and then you're hitting a shorter iron into the green so you might actually be a lot tighter within the green itself so it actually might make a, a big difference. And I, I don't know that you'd be able to get rid of handicaps completely because there's not enough of a scale, I guess you'd say. Cause yeah. you got guys in the league that are one, one handicap to a 30, whereas right. there's only three options for a T. Right. So yeah. I don't well, think maybe you got to move, move your completely move your T boxes a little bit. Then you're not just moving them five yards each. You're actually yeah. taking it into account. I think that that'd be the way to do it, Dell. And I think that, uh, even if you did do that, it could still tighten up the handicap. So you're not given, you know, two strokes a hole or strokes on par threes and stuff like that. I th I actually think that there's something there worth exploring. Yeah. I think it's definitely an experiment worth trying. Like why not? Yeah. Yep. And so I'll go now drums because mine kind of ties into this a little slightly. Mine too. So my, <laughs> does it a little bit? I guess we should have told each other what it is, but um, mine is my more variety in the game. Is that yours? Um, no. Okay, good. So we tried it a bit actually when we went out to Gilbert with uh, Dal and Stocks and Tej and uh, Reggie. And uh, who else is there, Dal? 
Big head mode. Yes. Mitch also. So, Mo. So we didn't get too crazy with it because it was Mitch's first time playing uh, Gilbert. So we didn't want to, you know, completely ruin his experience. But I think that it'd be such a cool thing. From my perspective, you go out and play the same course every day. You're hitting the same clubs, the same approaches. It just kind of gets tiresome in a way to some, I guess. But why not mix it up a bit? Like play around from the reds, play around from the blocks. Uh, unless you're paying 200 bucks a Predator Ridge, like try some different stuff around the courses. If it's your home course, why not? Learn to hit different shots. Uh, I don't know. And it's the same in tournaments too. We uh, we said that there should be some two-man scrambles instead of all individual like provincial tournaments. And that's something that we actually want to do next summer is uh, we got some, we got some stuff in the works. So stay tuned for that. And it'll be uh, a, t- a two men scramble, kind of a competitive series of events, I guess you'd say. Not an unfortunate series of events. Don't be vague. A competitive. <laughs> no, a I mean, the, you, yeah, you could kind of figure it out with what you, the information you have there. We want to do mm-hmm. five or six, uh, two man scrambles and then do uh, the year, the year end, I guess. And whoever has the most points kind of goes into that, uh, that tournament. So you can, you can play one, you can play six. Like the more points you have, you get uh, invited to the show. Beauty. And like this, it. this might actually be separate from, I'm planning it to be separate from the King cup. Like the King cup was a three man, right? Three man scramble. And uh, out at Oak Lake. But this will just be kind of a circuit. Two man scramble. It's easier to organize because it's only four guys, right? Mm-hmm. Like two and two. You don't have to worry about sixums and stuff like that. And uh, if guys want to go, they can go. If not, stay at home. <laughs> More to come with that. More to come. Uh, the one that I had, and I guess this is going to be more so um, like the uh, like the local clubs taking initiative and doing it. But uh, I thought. Um, Leagues based on abilities. So like an introductory league where they have somebody that's out and about on the course, like like a marshal, um, but they're helping guys out as they play for the first maybe couple weeks. Cause I think that's probably the best way to learn is if you're amongst people of the same ability and you're out playing, not necessarily just taking lessons, and um, you get guys going out and showing uh, kind of the ropes of how to play in a league setting. Mm-hmm. Where you get taught some of the rules, the etiquette, um, what you should do in situations where there is a lost ball. Like um, if make sure that everybody in the group is in agreement with what's going on, that type of thing too. I think that's an awesome idea, Drums. I think that it could be also a good idea to have for women, women's yep. league. I know that a lot of women our age are very intimidated to go out to a, a women's league because of the older women that are there. And I mean, we know some of the older ladies on the course are not the most friendly people in the world for mm-hmm. some reason, but uh, I think that it'd be good if you had like say a Grady out there with yep. a group of four or five women or five, four or five new golfers, two men. And uh, he'd be perfect guy for that job, I think. Just to kind of not get in their way or not tell them too much, but just like be there in case they have questions or, you know? Yep. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was thinking. <clears throat> and then you get into uh, some more competitive leagues. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. It's, uh, it's all... I think that you just kind of have to experiment with this kind of stuff, right? Like some of these things you can try out, like try out the one stroke penalty for a year, see how things change. Try. uh, And that's uh, what I meant. Like when, like we need new blood in there to help change things. Like if you don't try things, you can never change things. What's the worst case scenario. Exactly. We go back to what we were just doing. Big deal. Yeah. I think just the game itself has is it has so much history there and tradition, and uh, people don't like change that much, and I can see that. But 
Why which not? Is, Why not evolve? Like it's everything f- else is. It's fine to have for the pros. I'm perfectly fine with like the pros having to be like that, that structured and this old school. Even so, do they need to be? No, but I, under, I understand that more than I understand people of our caliber having to confine by all these, the exact same rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, closing okay. thoughts. Dal, what do you got? What are you going to say? Well, I was just going with that structure thing that just gives you an ability to get everybody on the same level, right? Like going back to hockey or football or baseball or whatever, you always play the same, you always play the same rules, right? Like, you know, those guys on the tour are getting paid millions of dollars to look like professionals. You might as well look like a professional. Yeah. Um, other than that, I am in no me like I'm a red tee golfer if this thing moves up to 90 to 100 strokes. So uh, I'm all in favor think, of it. I'll, do you think that you'd I, enjoy that more? Uh, I don't know. It's not going to change my slice. Like <laughs> as long as I can keep it out of the bush off the tee box, I'm usually okay. But, you know, it's still gonna go your, left, right? I your, get slice, figured out. your slice isn't as slicey as it was three years ago. It's that's a little less, but it's still, uh, still got some movement on it there. But that's okay. At least you know where it's going to go. And I remember telling you that even when you were – slicing a lot yeah because i've been on the i've been looking over the ball before and i didn't know which way it was going to go because it I, you know you you try to change things and it becomes unnatural to you and then you're yeah. thinking too much and then you have no idea where it's going to go right but there's got to be a way to straighten out this goddamn slice <laughs> <laughs> tell you you've done pretty good and that, the ball actually goes uh quite a bit further than it did before too because yeah. there's less spin on it and it gets less uh caught up in the wind so yeah no uh i don't know closing thoughts oh i got one more thing to change uh the guys that go out there with the orange carts and just rip around and don't fix any ball marks and don't make anybody go any <laughs> and don't fill in the greens the tee boxes the par threes they just do laps and laps and laps and laps like laps. marshall's oh yeah like marshall's Okay, like the orange flag on their cart. I yeah. thought you meant like orange paint job cart. Yeah, so did I. I was like, who is he talking about? No, I was <laughs> I was trying to be super sneaky about Marshalls. Oh no, I shit talk Marshalls all the time on here. You Fucking get a useless. you get a membership, like just do your job. hundred th- percent. I would like to have a evaluation sheet <laughs> card that and you hand in every round. That you hand in every round and they know who is marshalling that round. And you go, why not get off cart? Did not fix a ball mark. Did not make anybody go faster. Did not let us pass this six of guys getting shit on Saturday. Like 100%. Absolutely. You're getting paid for, you're not getting paid. You're getting reimbursed for your time though with a membership. Like earn it. Yep. The problem is, I think guys just do it strictly for the membership. And then once they have the membership, I mean, fuck off. Yeah. Well, that's like, what I mean. Oh, you need some way to hold them accountable, though. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So, no, and uh, maybe a way to do that would be split the summer into like four chunks. So you start off, obviously, you're you're golfing for free, but you do the evaluation thing, and there's just like a thing at the end. Not everybody's going to fill it out, same as anything, yeah. but you get the evaluation, and if your score is shitty, you get axed. Your membership's done. You can still golf at the course, but you you don't golf for free anymore. So you get past the second one, you're good, and then you have a tough third uh, third quarter there, and sh- you know you're you're loafing around, and you get the axe. You can't golf for free anymore. You know. Oh like, yeah. If that's yeah. usually that's what happens if you don't do your job, is you get axed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this being a marshal should be the same. But the and problem is they hard. get they get the payment up front. Like we go to work, we get paid every two weeks and that's what keeps us going to work. Whereas these guys, they get their whole payment right to the first day on the job and then they just dick around for the rest of the time. Yeah. Yeah. We need a, uh, we need a suggestion box or a questionnaire or something. <laughs> After this guy did his job. I'm thinking we'll eventually get to the point where every golf course has like an app on your phone or something. 
and uh, you enter your score in there. It goes into the database, all the handicaps like that. You have a thing like that pops up in your phone. You can enter your evaluation in, you know, you can order drinks ahead of time or you can call the cart girl from your phone. I just think that there's a huge opportunity on this thing that a lot of golf courses aren't even utilizing yet. Mm -hmm. So you need a lot more carts then. A lot of carts. Yeah, beer carts. Yeah. It'd be like uh, ding, 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 ding all over the just be a Just be a personal doing laps around. They had, uh, they ran one what of those it? type things at Glen Lee for a little bit. Um, I think it was like oh, yeah, a local, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was yeah. a local guy that uh, created the software or whatever, but it, I don't know that it lasted like a month. Just because like the so, girls, the girls were getting dinged every two seconds. Yeah. Fucking nowhere near each other. This is what it should be. Okay. So in five years, Wheat City has its own uh, yep. cryptocurrency. <laughs> no, listen to this. Listen yeah, I'm to with this. you. I'm with you. So, so at the start of the year, you pay your membership, you get like 50 Wheat City tokens, right? And you go out there and like you're on your app and uh, the, you can see where the car curl is. And you're like, okay, I want her to come here. I'll, I'll, don't, I'll give her two tokens or something like, like I'm going to bid two tokens. <laughs> and then like the group in front of you says, uh, no, screw that. I want to drink. So then you all bid them and you go three tokens, right? Or if you don't care, you just don't do anything. And then they, she just does her normal rounds. Yeah. But I think that'd be sweet. And then the cart girl gets to keep all the tokens. And that's part of like their tip structure. But then if I'm not like, if I'm not tipping and you're tipping, She's just going to rip by me the whole time. Yeah. And then Which I don't like, get any yeah. drinks. No, it wouldn't be a tip. It's like a bid to get her there. Well, okay, whatever. A bid. Say it however you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> we've, I think we've had this argument recently. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? I think that'd be cool. And a lot of guys wouldn't partake, and it wouldn't happen every day. But there could be some cool bidding wars that go down, and you can buy, like, Wheat City tokens and – use them for different things and stuff like that i think you have a vending machine every three holes mm. beers that take credit cards i don't know how you make mixed drinks yet but i'll figure that out soon well a lot of them have cans like jack daniels has a can with coke in it yeah it makes you a night night probably oh does it ever we've had some jd before this crew well let's wrap I think we're done. Do we solve uh, the the golf world? Do we solve it? Do we have answers? Golf's not going to take two hours. <laughs> How well, fast do you think you could play? In a foursome or one? Foursome. What's the fastest round you think we could pull off? Remember when you had know. to be in your own cart? That was awesome. You couldn't share a cart? You were ripping around the course. Yeah, it was sick. Do you notice how, uh, you know, like guys like Lannon will say pace of play instead of like the rounds take too long? Because once you're at the course, there's absolutely no rush to get done. There's not. Like, right. That's what, that's what your day is, really. Like, if it's a Thursday and it's men's night, like my whole day is golf, right? So yeah. I'm in no rush. It's just the pace of it. You don't want to be waiting at every hole or waiting at every waiting shot, five minutes to hit every shot. Yeah. 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 So, oh, that's another one know. we got changed. The guy leaning on the club waiting for you to get off the green. <laughs> that the, guy, the when one. you look back, he's waiting on his approach shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leaning on the club and the hand on the – and he's just so mad at you because you didn't <laughs> any footer. Beat it with that. It's a nice day. Enjoy it. Yeah, I agree with that. There's – you can never be on the course too long, but when it when it starts interfering with your golf game, I think that's when the problem is. True that. So, anyways, Dal, thanks, Emil, for coming on. Um, we'll probably have you again sometime if Rigo ever, uh, or if one of us can't come on, you'll be maybe our rotating uh, sub. Pretty good episode tonight. I don't know if we solved any of the world issues, but I, I think that you need to have these conversations in in everything, and then that includes the game of golf. Because why not? If you if things never change, then what are you doing? Sounds good to me. Thanks for having me, boys. I uh, you can talk to my agents and see when I'm available next. Uh, we'll, that dis we'll discuss payment. Yeah. 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 We'll give you some Weed City tokens. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll some I'll king mint coins some this weekend. For yeah, you're you. gonna mint some king coins. 
I actually made some King coins like six months ago. I'd say they're just like <laughs> KNG. I made like 888 million of them, I think. And I lost my password, I think. So oh, brilliant. if anybody ever tries to mint the coin uh, KNG, good luck. It's already taken, buddy. Darn it. All right. Let's get the <laughs> hell out of here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Love you, boys. Later. Love you, fellas. Bye.